Uh, as I said, I'm Ellen Santos. Do you hear me well? It's okay. All right. Uh, I am a postdoctoral research at SF Tech, and uh, SF Tech is a OLU located company. We have been founded in 2014 with an innovative and revolutionary drawing technology. And today I'll be presenting to you SF Tech's mission of drawing new value which allows our focus in bioeconomy to convert waste into raw materials. So our product is the mod heat dryer, as the name suggests, is a modular dryer, industrial dryer. And it has very interesting features when compared with the best available technologies that you have in the market nowadays. And the mod heat dryer is built in containers and it's building modular layers which allow the mix, continuous mixing of the materials. And because of that, we are able to dry uh, economically feasible, uh, low value materials and very hard to handle. So when you talk about industrial side strings, you have several materials of sticky nature which are very difficult to dry with the conventional drying technologies. Our dryer also offer much lower investment costs than uh, the best technology available. And uh, due to uh, its compact structure and uh, its easy handling of a high, a high, big volumes, it also offers a very short payback time. The other innovation that you have in our dryer is that you are able to utilize waste heat from the industrial process and redirect it for the drying processing itself. So uh, this compact structure is also very easy to assess, what gives us a very easy maintenance and low maintenance costs. Uh, we have proven that we have much higher uh, efficiency, energy efficiency than our direct competitors. And because we are built in containers, we can just aggregate one mobile dryer to another, and you can attend to any industrial capacity according to the desire of our customers. We are, by instance, three times uh, less footprint. We have three times less footprint than our direct competitor, and you can offer different uh, cost efficient and economically feasible uh, possibilities to dry biomaterials or any other type of side streams, industrial side streams. So we have experience with different types of industrial fields, but today our focus is in bioeconomy. So I will share with you our experience with so specific some biomaterials and some materials that are being focused to generate bioenergy. So we start talking about wood types of materials and type why they are important now. Today in Europe, we are being uh, asked when you have a goal from the Renewable Energy Directive of the European Union that you should start introducing more and more and more renewables as a full source of uh, primary energy in order that you can uh, lower our dependence in fossil fuels. And that's so we could also start using the forest biomass. That's something that's renewable and that you can plan to uh, recover reconstruct with time. So annually in, our, in Europe, we use about 600 million cubic meters of wood, which goes mainly for residential use, but it also has big contribution of the industrial segment, especially from the paper, um, board, and pulp industry, and also from the small combined heat and power plants, which direct this energy for district heating. So why is a problem then that they need to dry the wood. If you talk about the forest wood supply chain, when they harvest the wood, they need to they increase its calorific value because when they take it, the wood, it has a very high moisture content. And when they have this high moisture content, the calorific value is as low as six gigajoules per, uh, per ton. So what they do, in usually, they take this high moisture content materials and they spread in asphalt or in big fields and they have to wait at least a year until they are able to achieve a calorific value that goes about 16 gigajoules per ton and then they are able to get some economically feasible profit after that. So 
is a very long processing, and you can imagine that if you're going to harvest today and you wait one year to sell your product, it's not very interesting. So, however, the problem is that the material would go and get very uh, expensive if you use the available drying technologies that they have now, and they should dry. So, we need to create a solution that could bring to them some uh, economically feasibility in the process. In the process. The paperboard and pulp industry also use a lot of uh, wood for energy generation because they take the wood to make the paper, but they have to debark the wood and it generates a big pile of side strings. So if they use it as they are, they have a very high moisture content. And because they have very high moisture content, they have to introduce additional fuels, some kind of fossil fuels that would help the ignition process. So if you dry those materials, you not only are you able to use them for energy production, but you also can start to direct them from generate other types of high value materials, such as biochar or bark milk that starts being used a lot in the market nowadays. We have experience with different piloting campaigns with which types of, mater types of materials. So we're taking such type of fields and you can convert them in pallets or briquettes and go in a very compact and feasible form of a fuel. We have proven that you can decrease those moisture content up to 10 to 20 percent, increasing the energy content in about 20 to 50 percent. We also have experience with the sludge itself, bio sludge itself, and one of the cases I'm presenting today is the bio sludge from pulp, paper, pulp, and board processing, which are different processing. But, uh, Talk about the problem itself. The European paper, board, and pulp industry uh, generates yearly about 50 million tons of solid waste. So that's the latest data from 2017. And uh, those solid waste, those sludges, they are go going mainly from lunch filling or incineration. And they come with very high moisture content, with 70%. So you can imagine that that's not very material that you can put to burn. You know, to dry at this high moisture content, or at least should not be profitable. The problem that should dry it, it's not very feasible. So here we have a picture of actually a recent piloting campaign we had in a big industrial site, but you cannot disclose the name of our customer, where you had to handle such type of sludge. And as you can see, it really comes in a dry texture. Those materials cannot be handled with all the dries because if they are not continuous mixes, they stick on the dryer. So that's the main point that you are able to innovate here when you talk about industrial drying. Other than that, it, if you just dry and you decrease a bit the value up to 50%, we should need to introduce some fossil fuels on that. So we had proven that if you use about 27,000 tons of sludge, and the using the future of reusing the waste heat from the industrial process to dry those materials. We can generate about 33,000 megawatts hour in energy for the company. Not only that, we avoid the usage of additional fossil fuels in 5,000 tons of coal, and you also avoid the emission of 13,000 tons of CO2 since we decrease the amount of fossil fuels or heat. So it's very interesting and uh, uh, environmental friendly methods to redirect the materials. Uh, other very interesting solution we had uh, tried, tested, and proven our efficiency is for different types of low value biomaterials, such as uh, organic sludge uh, manures and <laughs> different types of those, uh, let's say, sewage materials. So, what you can do, this is actually, you say, watch the concept, watch the reality. It's a bit different, but yes, we managed to use those materials for drying, and after that, we introduce for granulation, and you generate different type of high-value byproducts, such as fertilizers. So, we have been focusing, in, and actually, as my, as my background, as I, I am a chemist, I am a doctor of chemistry, so I am uh, focusing materials chemistry, and my main job in the company is to 
identify new ways of reusing industrial side strings. So we take a different side strings, I think about a process where you can separate it, where you can generate uh, different materials and profitable high value materials for the company by using its uh, high value components in the side strings. So we're open, of course, for research collaboration. We are located in Oland. You have some collaboration with the University of Oulu, so we would be happy in collaboration with you too. You have my contact here. I think I got on time, but I did not leave time for cash, so maybe we can talk in the panel discussions. <laughs> Thank you all.